अंजलि गुड मॉर्निंग सर नो सर नॉट विजिबल गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग Anjali, Good please mute. Anjali. Good morning, all of you. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. So let me introduce Dr. Sunidharan. He is actually uh, I'm handling the class for um, MPC six. Okay. Larum regular right to area because if you have any doubt you can very well ask. Okay, welcome, Sinidharan sir, to the class. Okay. Good morning, sir. Oh, statistics in the class. Good morning, la. Can you hear me, sir? Shailaja, please mute. ऑडिबलो ओके ओके यस सो आह दी स्टैटिस्टिक्स आह स्टैटिस्टिक्स इन साइकोलॉजी आई थिंक आह यू माइट हेड माइट हैव हर्ड और लर्न्ड स्टैटिस्टिक्स आह इन योर स्कूल डेज आई थिंक आह इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स इन सेवेन टू एट स्टैंडर्ड आई डोंट नो एक्सेक्टली आई रिमेम्बर एनीवे we all have learned uh, statistics in our uh, high high, uh, high school so uh, so you uh, you have a uh, so something uh, you have a knowledge about something regarding the statistics statistics are basically it is a science of gaining insight from the data or we can simply say that it is it deals with the data as you all know that data means any kind of information that is uh, data and we know that uh, data are everywhere uh, that means uh, informations are everywhere and uh, in that way we can say that this uh, age this modern age is the age of statistics we all are deal with some kind of uh, information or in this uh, era on this modern age or post modern age data is very important and there are uh, there are many issues regarding the uh, uh, data so we can in that way we can say that uh, our modern age is the age of statistics and statistics is uh, extensively and efficiently used in all field of uh, social sciences in a, almost all uh, in every science uh, this uh, statistics is very important or statistic uh, the science has its uh, application of statistical method but it is most extensively and efficiently efficiently used uh, in the field of uh, social science and now it became an essential part of human life as we all are 
on dealing with or every kind of information that we uh, know is about uh, some uh, some uh, uh, some kinds of dealing of statistics or uh, some uh, dealing of the information in our daily life actually this is a methodology for understanding assessing and controlling the operation of society and thereby promoting the social wealth many kind of informations are used for understanding the various uh, facets of our uh, social life or assessing the social life and also controlling the social life. so this is very important statistics is very important for understanding assessing and controlling the operation of society <clears throat> and it's a historical term the uh, uh, term statistics is derived from the uh, latin word uh, in uh, uh, every language the statistics has its meaning most importantly in latin it means status or in italian language it is uh, known as statistic statistia or in german it is statistics but according to the observation of a great philosopher and uh, scientist john cron it means a person who deals with the affairs of state as we know that initially kings or monarchs or government are used to collect information related to the population agricultural land wealth etc of any state of any country so this is the uh, in the in that way we can say that uh, uh, the uh, government officials are collecting information related to population or agriculture uh, wealth of the uh, people in a society and in scientific culture as we discussed earlier it deals with or what, but when we talk about the statistics in a scientific term it deals with the collection of data and their classification analysis and interpretation of the data uh, so in uh, this uh, perspective statistics are mainly three uses in uh, social sciences it is used for describing data testing the hypothesis or hypothesis testing and inferring population value from sample value so in our uh, science so in our psychology and in related social science statistics is mainly used for description of the data for testing the hypothesis formed as part of the research and uh, we, uh, we or the scientist uh, psychologist or uh, um, sociologist so analysis etc are using uh, the statistics in inferring population value from the sample form. and uh, next uh, we are going to discuss why statistics is important in psychology or why we study statistics before going to this uh, discussion like what uh, actually what do you mean by psychology even is the mutual mic and what is psychology what do you mean by psychology hello so to study the behavior okay study the behavior then to study a um, uh, human mind in scientific way scientific ah, method the science uh, yes mind in uh, scientific way and any any other perspective or regarding this uh, study, of, study of study history. of study of mental process like thinking study of uh, oh memory. study of mental process like uh, okay like uh, thinking this link problem sorry etc okay all uh, 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 this uh, all your answers are right but in psychology generally it deals with the or it is the scientific study of behavior mental process and experience of the organism mainly focusing on, but mainly focusing on uh, human beings all uh, psychology deals with uh, this aspect of all organism but uh, some of these aspects are very important or 
very evident in higher uh, organism like a human being for example experience even though uh, animals may have experiences but uh, experience is uh, more importantly discussed in the context of the human being or human experience so generally in the with generally the study of uh, psychology means scientific understanding of behavior mental process and uh, uh, experiences and as we know that uh, psychological research is the core stone of our psychology field because all information or all kinds of knowledge exists today is the result of the scientific investigation various researches have undertaken or been undertaken so whatever knowledge we have now about the psychology or human mind that is a result of the output of the scientific investigation that is the output of the psychological research so uh, so this uh, aspect this research is very important in almost all field the research is very important but for psychology this is very uh, much important than uh, when compared to other sciences because uh when we try to understand the human mind or when we try to understand the behavior mental process and experiences environment is very uh, crucial element and this environment is ever evolving or ever changing aspect as far as the psychology stuff concerned so when we discuss about uh, uh, this uh, kind of information in terms of the uh behavior or uh, in the process or experience as uh, this uh, environment are changing uh, various uh, type of uh, research are very important and uh, for psychological research statistics is very essential all psychologists need to know how to interpret the information and how to analyze the data or how to analyze the information in almost all field of psychology psychologists are gathering information for example in clinical psychology uh, a clinical psychologist or a counselor gather the information about the patient's condition or about the client's condition about the psychopathology of a patient or psychopathology of a individual so uh, this information Uh, he collector has to be interpret and analyze and for this interpretation and analysis uh, statistics is very important so by learning how to correctly interpret the data psychologists can ensure their service to enhance the well being of the human being so uh, this is very important as far as psychologists are concerned because uh, we all are psychologists are dealing with the uh, different kinds of information about the human mind and by correctly interpreting this data only we can ensure the psychological service to enhance the well being of the human being and in this context statistics play very important for psychology field or statistics is very important for psychologist working in various uh, sub field of psychology okay so this is very important and uh, in scientific way in psychological way we can say that statistical techniques are used to make many decision that affect behavior and experience of our lives this the technique is used to make a decision we come to a conclusion or we make a psychologist make an inference about the various aspect of the behavior mental process and experience of the individual using the different kinds of statistical uh, techniques so this is the my context in which uh, statistics is uh, uh, in this uh, by the, by the, this way we can say that statistics is very important for the psychology field in almost all fields of psychology uh, the statistical technique are used to analyze and interpret the different kind of uh, data so we so far we have discussed about the uh, uh, 
information regarding the data. So now let us discuss what is data. As we discussed, data means any kind of information. And uh, statistical, statistical data are usually obtained by counting or measuring some item in terms of its quantity or quality. And uh, most uh, data or most information that the psychologists are used can be put into the following categories. <clears throat> that is uh, mainly it can be uh, data can be divided into quantitative data and qualitative data. Quantitative and qualitative. So our information, the information the psychologist collect as part of his profession can be uh, are classified into qualitative data and quantitative data. Qualitative means this kind of information or this kind of measurement that each fall into one or several categories. Here it is typed as fail, it is fall, and huh? this is not the correction. So this kind of information fall into any one of or several of the categories like the color of the eye, the color of the hair, uh, gender of a person, ethnic group, and uh, any other attributes of population. That's that kind of information is known as qualitative data or qualitative information. So uh, quantitative in its, uh, in its uh, other side, that is uh, data are observation, observation of information that are measured on a numerical scale. We can measure this kind of data, quantitative data, on a numerical scale. For example, uh, distance traveled uh, by a student to college or number of the children in a family, etc. We can count number uh, uh, such kind of so there is a number the number assigned to this particular kind of data is known as data may be qualitative or <coughs> quantitative in its uh, nature and uh, when we discuss uh, more about this quantitative and qualitative data uh, first uh, we can discuss about the quantitative data this kind of data. Sir, are number. you sharing the presentation still? Now we are, are you sharing the presentation still? We are able to see yeah. who you the presentation. I cannot see. One minute. Yes, it was visible. Visible. It was. Yes, it is visible. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, now they look minimized, sir. We can't see it. They are looking minimized. Minimized. Is it uh, clear now? It is visible okay. clearly. Okay, okay, okay. No issues, it's visible, yes. Sir, it is not okay. visible. So Excuse me, sir. Uh, uh -huh. It is not visible, and somebody has presented in between. That is why that is called minimized. If you can kindly maximize it, sir, so that will be like will be visible. Because I request all students not to present anything in between because it interrupts the all class and uh, again like sir has to do so many work to again present it. Thank you. Okay. So if we print yes. the presentation, it will not be gone. If anybody else presenting also. Okay, that is uh, you can control. Hmm? Okay. So going now the data again in its detail. This uh, both kind of data, quantitative and qualitative. Quantitative data are always a number, and these data are the result of counting or measuring attributes of the population. And there can again this kind of data can be separated into two groups discrete and continuous data. Discrete data, it is uh, the result of counting like uh, number of students in a classroom 
or number of books on a shelf or the uh, number of uh, chair in the classroom etc here this kind of data is discrete because it is not in continuous as the next uh, type of data uh, the next type of quantitative data is in continuous data this is also the result of the measuring but it is continuous for example the distance traveled by a student to the uh, college that we can uh, that information may be in terms of for, uh, for example 3.2 uh, kilometers for example or weight of the luggage as 0.8 kilogram etc here the data is in continuous but in discrete data there is uh, that, that kind of information that kind of data is there. like a hall number number of the children for example two children in that family or three children or total of four person in the family so that kind of quantitative data is discrete and in continuous data there is a uh, continuous uh, number uh, by 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 assigning a continuous number in quantitative data uh, again uh, it uh, can be divided into two subgroups that is dichotomic and polynomic die as you know that uh, there is only two options like gender and is not uh, uh, dichotomic but generally we are considering uh, this uh, gender as a dichotomic male and female now it is uh, transgender is also included in this category but uh, usually we are uh, considering two uh, gender as, as male and female and polynomic uh, that means uh, when uh, we explain the uh, data with more than two objects for example educational status education level of a person maybe uh, school level education college level education university level education or uh, um, higher education etc okay so there is a polynomial means uh, more than two options okay so uh, we can um, diagrammatically represent uh, this uh, classification of variable like this variable in the quality and quantitative qualitative is again uh, divided into dichotomic and polynomial and the quantitative is uh, divided into discrete and continuous variable <clears throat> and uh, examples are uh, given here as we discussed so two types of data uh, that is used in uh, social science uh, qualitative and uh, quantitative all kind of statistical data are uh, uh, divided into this way qualitative and quantitative aspect and again it's a sub classification yes before uh, we going to this uh, uh, psychological sorry statistics in uh, application of statistics in psychology how uh, psychologists are used to different scales to measure different kinds of uh, attribute as we are concerned okay so there are some scales of measurement psychologists used for getting information or getting the data and these are the classification for the scale of measurement uh, scale of measurement can be classified into nominal ordinal interval and ratio okay yes nominal that means uh, consist of category in each of which the number of respective observation is recorded the categories are in no logical order and no and have no particular relationship with each other. the categories are said to be mutually exclusive since an individual object or measurement can be included in only one of the categories for example gender is a nominal scale of measurement gender that is male or female usually we are uh, describing gender as male or female here these two categories are in any way have no logical order that means male is 
uh, female is equal or there is no uh, order in this uh, uh, in this categories and uh, there uh, and also there is no particular relationship with this two categories they are mutually exclusive male is a mutually exclusive uh, categories as far as the female uh, uh, group as far as the female group is concerned so that that the kind of uh, uh, scale is known as nominal scale or color of the eye that is another example for nominal scale there is no logical order or no particular relationship with the category or relationship with the group that kind of measurement is known as nominal and second is ordinal as if the name implies there is an order in this classification for example we can classify the students in terms of rank they obtain in a particular examination uh, there is a uh, the, the first rank for a for a particular student or second rank for a particular student but here one thing uh, one thing is very important difference between each one is not really known that means yeah, for example first uh, rank holder obtained the mark of uh, 95 out of 100 and the second rank holder may obtain uh, the mark of uh, 9d and third rank holder obtain the mark of uh, 89 here the difference between each group is not really known or there is no uh, there is no particular difference between each group values in one category are larger or smaller than the values in other category for example in uh, many of the psychological testing there is a rating scale and uh, each item can be rated as excellent good fair or uh, so here there is an order as we know that excellent is the uh, uh, most uh, uh, favorably uh, ordered uh, uh, of, uh, uh, option and then good then fair and poor so there is an order next is the interval here <coughs> both order and exact difference between the values are known for example, in the case of the uh, Celsius temperature measurement, difference between 60 and 50 is 10 degree. And here it is uh, the same as the difference between 80 and 70. So there is a, uh, a difference in 10 degrees, 10 degrees in each. And many of the psychological scales are interval in nature you can for example you can understand when we assess the intellectual quotient of a person uh, quotient of a person normally it is uh, assigned in terms of difference between 15 or 20 for example average iq of the person is in between 90 to 110 then after that uh, there is a difference between 110 and 130 that group is known as above average intellectual group then above 130 so like there is a exact number of difference between each group that is the interval scale and last one that is ratio here it consists of numerical measurement where the distance between number is of a non or a constant start size and zero is meaningful here in the case of the interval we can say that there is no zero temperature, no true zero temperature. Uh, uh, this zero is also a kind of temperature that we can feel, or below the zero, so we can feel uh, the, uh, yes, uh, the core. Here, this uh, ratio, numerical measurement, where the distance between number is of a constant size and zero is meaningful. For example, if we uh, assessing the weight, in a weighing machine, the, uh, the needle of the machine starts from this zero to a particular number, for example, 60 kg or 56. In that case, zero is very important. When we or when we measure the height of a person, we start from the number zero to a 
particular uh, feet or inch. So in this way, we can classify this measurement into nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. So any kind of psychological uh, measurement used in research or psychological research may take any of this uh, measurement category. Sometimes it may be nominal. For example, if you take gender as a variable, gender as a uh, important variable, we use the nominal scale of measurement. Or in some case, the psychologists use order. Uh, so they are using ordinal, first rank or first uh, place in the uh, for a person in a particular examination. So in that case, ordinal measurement psychologists are using an interval where there is an exact difference between each category. Interval scale is used and ratio scale when zero has its uh, uh, meaningful in measuring, ratio scale is used. So these are the scales. So our data may be, psychological data may be all in any of these category. It may be nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio in its uh, nature. Okay, so this is the basic of uh, the data. Data may be qualitative or quantitative. Psychologists are using the data in terms of nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And the, uh, the uh, next uh, topic is how we, how psychologists are uh, taking data to analyze or to arrive at conclusion in a research uh, process. Actually, uh, this time you, have, you might have heard this population and sample. Population, uh, we obtain the data from the population by we are taking the sample of that population. So there is a, there are two terms, population and sample. Population means the entire set of individual or objects of interest or the measurement obtained from all individual or object of interest. Okay, this is the entire set of the individual or object of interest to the investigator, object of interest to the researcher. And sample means a portion, a part of the population of the interest that assume to represent, like supposed to represent the entire population. Here, and this uh, uh, figure, this uh, car, as are given as the uh, object of interest in this population, and the uh, investigator taking a particular sample from this population to test the fuel efficiency of its engine. Okay. So sample means item we selected from, item the researcher selected from the population and population the entire set of the individual or object. Generally, uh, in research, the uh, psychologists are taking the sample from a particular population. For example, taking the student as the sample, that means whatever we come to the conclusion as a part of the research, it is, uh, it represents, that assumption is actually representing the characteristics of the population. But by checking or by assessing, by analyzing the data from a particular sample. That is the, so we obtain, the psychologist or researcher obtain the data for the statistical analysis from the population by taking a particular portion, particular portion part that is sample. Okay, so these are these uh, very uh, basic information about the data. Data may be qualitative, quantitative, and in psychology, we obtain data by using four types of measurement, and we, uh, by using four uh, type of measurement, and we obtain the data from the population using or taking particular sample. Okay, now we are uh, entering this uh, detailed aspect of the science of statistics, especially statistics is used in, statistical method is used in psychology. Yes, <clears throat> generally statistics, uh, uh, some um, 
scientists or uh, some uh, mathematicians are considering statistics as part of the uh, mathematics, but uh, statistics as such is a separate uh, discipline, separate uh, entity. And it uh, broadly studied under two heading descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Statistics is uh, used for describing the information, describing the data. Similarly, statistics are used for inferring some kind of information from the data. Okay, so in this way, we can uh, discuss the statistics under these two subheadings descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. For describing the data or for descriptive statistics it is it deals with uh, or it discusses the method of organizing summarizing and the present and presenting data in an informative way to the scientific community or to the people in general okay uh, so there is uh, there are some methods for organizing or summarizing and presenting data with uh, 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 with some kind of intention uh, in an informative way to the population to the uh, to the people that is uh, uh, that is uh, descriptive statistics and <coughs> inferential statistics is method used to determine something about the population on the basis of the sample as we discussed earlier by checking the fuel efficiency of some cars in a sample determining the fuel efficiency of the all cars manufactured in that company okay here the researcher or the investigator is determining something about the population but on the basis of the sample so uh, inferring something based on sampling inferring something about the population based on sample so that this kind of statistics is known as inferential stats so statistics are used for describing the data and also used to determining or inferring something about the population from the sample. Okay. So two kinds of statistics, descriptive statistics and uh, inferential statistics. And uh, this in, uh, descriptive statistics, as we discussed, it is the description of the obtained data describe the characteristics of the data and it mainly involves two operation organization and summarization of the data organizing the data in a particular way and summarizing the data in a particular way that is uh, informative to the population informative to the people uh, to whom it is uh, this uh, data concerned so organization and the summarization of data is the uh, is the two main, main are the main two uh, operation to operations involved in descriptive statistics and inferential statistics deals with the drawing conclusion about the population on the basis of the sample or the event which are yet to occur on the basis of the past event. In another way, we can say that inferential statistics is an educated guess about the population based on the sample it provides two uh, inferential statistical methods provide tools to compute the probability of future behavior of the objects for <coughs> for any science prediction is very important so this inferential studies are mainly used for prediction uh, for the purpose of the prediction predicting the behavior of the individual that is one of the major goal of the uh, science of psychology prediction of the behavior here using in uh, scientific way or in uh, the context of research we can say that 
this kind of statistical method provide some tools to <coughs> compute the probability of the future behavior of the human being human being how the human behavior how a person behave in a particular context that kind of behavior is uh, predicted by the researcher using the inferential statistics and here uh, as we discussed uh, used to determine something about the population on the basis of the sample okay so first uh, we can discuss about the first part of the uh, first operation of the descriptive data that is uh, organization that we can go for the next aspect that is the summary session organization is mainly uh, uh, mainly involved uh, in the you know, statistical process like uh, tab, uh, classification, tabulation, and uh, presentation. Okay. And uh, this uh, summarization. Uh, summary is, uh, in summary, the statistical techniques are used to determine the central tendency of the data dispersion of the data uh, and also to understand the skewness and courtesies of the data collected by the researcher for a scientific purpose. So first uh, we will discuss uh, the <coughs> organization. This organization that is a uh, classification, I think uh, all this uh, uh, we have learned or we have studied in our uh high school level so classification once the data collected it should be arranged in a particular format so the arrangement of the data in the group according to some similarities according to some criteria that's the classification actually it is a summary of the frequency of the individual score or the range of scores for a variable raw data are organized as frequency distribution we draw a particular uh, table and we count the uh, we put the tally mark based on the frequency of a particular data. Okay, that is the classification uh, with the uh, frequency distribution. And there are uh, frequency distribution for ungrouped data and uh, grouped data. I think all these are, uh, yes, uh, you have already learned how to ask by this ungrouped data. Anyway. Next is a uh, type of frequency uh, distribution that is uh, there may be a relative distribution. Relative distribution that is proportion of the total number of cases observed at each score. That is relative. Cumulative to know the number of observation less than a particular number or at a particular level. That is cumulative. For example, uh, how many data are under a particular score? For example, under the score of 70. Uh, so we can uh, add the data, number of frequencies uh, in uh, different uh, classes uh, below the score of the 70. That is a cumulative data. Then cumulative relative entry of any score of the class interval expressed scores cumulative frequency as a proportion of the total number of frequencies. Here the number of the uh, fre sorry, frequency is determined as a proportion of the total number of the cases. That is the type of uh, frequency distribution. All these are very simple and I think uh, we all have learned uh, this as part of the uh, high school education. And the tabulation, that means, tabulation means uh, presenting uh, the data in the format of a table. Table is systematic arrangement of classified data in row and column with appropriate heading and subheading. So for a table, there should be table number, title, caption, subheading, body of table, in some cases, head note, footnote, source of the information, etc. And uh, this kind of uh, table, uh, we all are familiar with uh, any kind of information presented in scientific way. Uh, uh, in uh, news purpose, in television, or any other kind of media. So, uh, for the table, uh, uh, these uh, characteristics are very important. Otherwise, the table is uh, 
uh, without uh, procession of tables, we can uh, without any meaning. And next is so first we classify, then we presented the table in the form of tabulation. Then the researcher is or we are going to present the data in an informative way to the tip. So data can be presented in graphical or diagrammatic format. Information contained in a frequency table is displayed in graph, displayed in graphic or diagrammatic format. As graphical patterns, uh, uh, there are some, uh, sorry, there are, uh, this graphical pattern can be of uh, histogram, frequency polygon, and uh, frequency curve. All these are uh, plants, okay. So, histogram, then this is uh, frequency polygon, then this is uh, a cumulative frequency, and another, <coughs> so the other, end of uh, presentation of the data is in diagrammatic form or diagram uh, mainly there are bar and it's a different bar diagram and it's a different pattern and also pipe diagram okay this is an example for uh, sorry this is a figure for the covid positive case in kerala for the last week from the 25th september to uh, uh, last yesterday 2nd october the number of cases uh, that is presented in the bar diagram. Hmm? Okay, this is the graphical uh, representation in uh, diagram. Sorry, bar is bar diagram. Ah, yes, all these are different patterns of uh, bar diagram. Here, <coughs> in this uh, bar diagram, uh, the total uh, in this example, total expenditure of students belong to two. Area that is one is uh, rural and the other is uh, urban area, mm -hmm. and there are uh, different uh, uh, levels of expenditure that is represented in one bar diagram for uh, both these two groups of students students from the rural and from the urban areas. And this is uh, another uh, kind of bar diagram. Here is also this uh, representation of uh, here uh, in this figure it is uh, uh, um, uh, di uh, diagrammatically represented. Uh, uh, this figure shows the percentage of respondents experience different symptoms related to cardiac problem like uh, chest discomfort, nausea, vomiting, breathlessness, itching, irregular heartbeat, cough. Etc. Okay, so this is uh, another kind of uh, bar diagram. These uh, diagrams are used. Hello, this kind of uh, diagrams are used for comparative purposes. In this diagram, this uh, figure represents comparison of mean score of different ways of coping of parents with autistic children learning disabled children and parents with uh, normal children. Okay, here coping ways of the figure uh, shows coping ways of different ways of coping uh, mechanism of parents with three groups of two groups of children with the uh, comparison of normal children. Okay, autistic, uh, here uh, this autistic group is represented the red uh, bar. And for LD, learning disabled children, that is uh, this uh, green and the other color, uh, I don't know whether you can see this uh, different color, that is uh, in terms of the parents of the uh, normal children. Okay, so here the bar diagram is used for the purpose of the comparison. Okay, and uh, this is a uh, pi diagram, and uh, you uh, know what is the for the pi diagram, or, or the, the kind of information is uh, 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 described so using the circular form. That is the pi diagram. Here are the different levels of quality of life of uh, some families uh, expressed in this diagram. Here, as, the, as you can see, 45 percentage of the uh, respondent or participant in that group is having the average quality of life. 20% with the law, 
quality of life and to 10% with moderate uh, 10% is moderate and to yes, uh, 17% with uh, very low and uh, only 8% with uh, high or high levels of quality. Okay, so this is a bar diagram. So in this way, data can be uh, data can be is presented in <coughs> graphical patterns. Uh, this graphical patterns so uh, using different kinds of graph uh, like histogram frequency polygon then bar diagram pi diagram etc this is the uh, presentation of the data <coughs> and uh, next is next is the summarization when we obtain uh, uh, data from a sample collected from a population that uh, sample is having some common proper properties or some commonalities and these commonalities are uh, represented in different ways that is known as summarization of the data we are summarizing the data collected from a particular sample and the summary of data is uh, uh, mainly as we discussed central tendency dispersion skewness and uh, hypothesis first one that is a uh, central tendency <clears throat> uh, this also we all have learned okay we have all, all, all we all have said <coughs> studied first one that is Central tendency, mainly there are three central tendency. They are mean, median, and mode. <clears throat> mean means it can be calculated by summing the value of variable divided by the number of values. That is uh, uh, generally called as a average this is most popular and widely used central tendency from the obtained information we summarize the data by finding its average for example by collecting the marks from the school from the class of from the class of a particular standard the teacher summarizing the mark of student by finding its average, the average of the mark or mean of the mark, that is the summarization of the data. And another <coughs> central tendency is median, as its uh, uh, name implies, it is the uh, middlemost value when the data are arranged in ascending or descending order. Or this value divides the entire distribution into two equal parts, and we find a middlemost value. Two groups are there. Uh, a, a group of people or group of individuals having uh, the value below the median and the value above the median. And uh, uh, and here, uh, this uh, one thing that is important: um, uh, this median is not affected by extreme values in the distribution, as in the case of the uh, as in the case of the mean. When we take the average or mean of the data, all values, especially the extreme values, are important because this value has uh, some effect, some main effect on this uh, on the <coughs> calculation of the mean. But in the case of the median, we are focusing only the middlemost value, whatever the value, whatever the value may be in its extreme maybe very low value in its uh, uh, one side or very high value uh, as compared to the median in <coughs> another situation but here it is not affected by the extreme value <coughs> and more that is most frequently occurred that uh, 
of the maximum concentration of the frequency on a particular score that is the mode so <clears throat> in this way we can say that or the investigator summarizing the data the investigator summarizing the data by finding its central tendency uh, and uh, central tendency like the mean median or more <clears throat> and another question is by excuse uh, me sir yes now the presentation is not visible presentation is not visible yes for all the same condition or for some people it is Hello? visible sir it is visible visible, visible. <laughs> no sir not okay. visible <laughs> Yes, a fourth photo is not visible. Not visible. Not visible. Not visible. And take the slide presentation. No. Not visible. Okay, I don't know. The photos are not visible. Please change this. Anyway, or take the presentation. For some people, for some people, it is visible. That means uh, uh, no problem is having here. Hmm? Okay. You. Pardon? Click on the okay. click on the slide and you see that visible. Pin it and the slide becomes visible. Do like that. Click on the slide, the small one. What you you cannot see, and then you see one three signs coming out, and in that there will be one called pin. Just click on that and the slide becomes visible. Okay. In order to see that, yes. I'm mentioning just change the layout. You will be able to see the PPT. Okay. So, my knowing only the central tendency, the researcher is not able to assess or understand the, ca the characteristics of uh, other data in the set of uh, set of data. Okay. Or how other data are dispersed from the central tendency. That is also important. And here the statisticians are using uh, another uh, uh, another uh, measure that is known as measures of this possible to have the complete picture of the set of the data or the entire data in a particular set. How each observation, how each datum are scattered from each other from the mean or from the central tendency is also important. So measures of this question tells about particular index. This index tells about how each data are this pulls from the central tendency or how each data is varied from this central tendency that is known as messages of dispersion and for the dispersion uh, mainly there are <coughs> three dispersion range average deviation and the standard deviation <coughs> okay Range that it is, it's a simplest form of this question. And uh, range means uh, uh, data is uh, varied in a particular range, for example, from 10 to 25. So range means difference between largest and the smallest scope. So in that way, we can say that this uh, entire data is uh, set in the group with a range of 15 for example, or in the range of 2 or 3. Okay, this is the simplest form. Here, it is the difference between highest and the lowest value. And average deviation is, here it means, <coughs> arithmetic mean of difference between each score and mean. Yes. Next is very important, standard deviation. This is the standard value as far as the statistician or statistical methods are used like mean in the case of the central tendency standard deviation is uh, most terrible and most widely used index of variability or dispersion it is the square of the deviation 
of each data from the me each data from the central tendency each data from the me <coughs> sorry the square root of uh, each data actually the square of deviation from each data is known as variance and square root of standard deviation or square root of the deviation of each, de each data from its outcome is known as variance thus standard deviation is the square root of the mean of square deviation of individual data from the mean and it is least affected by the fluctuation of sampling in some situation <coughs> this uh, fluctuation is uh, something is uh, affected for understanding the uh, for understanding the uh, distribution and <coughs> this is the step for calculating the standard deviation and uh, now we are uh, we are uh, approaching or closing uh, to the problems of our uh, paper or statistics paper. Uh, step four, uh, finding uh, this uh, standard deviation. First step for finding the standard <laughs> deviation. First step is find the mean of the data. And second is find the square of its distance, square of distance of each data from the mean. Third step is sum the value from this step two. Find its uh, sum uh, of the value in uh, step two. And the fourth step is divide by the number of the data, number of the individual or number of the observation in the uh, number of the uh, observation in the <coughs> sample and take its square root, that is the value of the standard. Okay, so this is the standard formula for finding the standard deviation. <coughs> okay, so there are, first we discussed about this uh, central tendency for any set of data. There is a central value, which may be in terms of the, uh, it can be, uh, calculated by using mean, median, or more. And for it from the central value, we use the other measures like range, average deviation, standard deviation. And uh, uh, next is to know about the symmetrical nature of the data, symmetrical or asymmetrical distribution of the uh, data we are uh, using another measure or another characteristic of the summarization of the data that is known as skewness and the truth these are the two important characteristics of the distribution for any uh, for a distribution of any kind of data <coughs> skewness that means degree of asymmetry of this in social science uh, there is a assumption that the collected data will be in the form of a normal distribution curve normal uh, curve that uh, I will show uh, after this later uh, like a bell-shaped curve I think you might have uh, familiar with that curve and here skewness refers to the extent which a distribution of the data concentrated at one of the distribution curve. And because of this means weakness or flatness of a frequent distribution curve when compared with normal distribution curve. More weak than uh, a normal, that I will show it's uh, uh, yes. For this uh, skewness, after uh, skewness, we can discuss this hypothesis. Skewness, there are two types of skewness, that is negative skewed or positive skewed. Yes. So this, uh, in this uh, figure, the central figure uh, B is the normal distribution curve with no skew, with uh, 
uh, that that uh, distribution is that uh, data set of data is no, uh, normally distributed without any uh, positive or and uh, without any skewness. And in the case of the negative skewness, the data is concentrated on the left side. Okay. Uh, so in opposition, in positive skew, the data is concentrated on right. So when the data is uh, negative skewed, mean became the uh, left to median and more. And here is also when the, um, the distribution is positively scored, the mean is the right side of the mod and mean. It is rightly or positively skewed and negatively, uh, sorry, ne uh, 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 skewed with the left sideness that is negatively skewed when compared with the normal distribution curve, normal skewness. Okay. Yes. Another uh, the other characteristics uh, that we discussed that is uh, kurtosis is normal distribution. The, the, the central curve is the normal distribution curve without any flattedness or uh, peakedness. And that is known as mesocortic. That is normal distribution. So when compared this, with uh, this uh, normal distribution curve or mesocortic, there may be peakedness as in the case of the leptocortic or there may be flattedness in the case of platycortic. So a distribution with the peakedness is known as uh, leptocortic or flattedness is known as platycortic. So uh, uh, kurtosis may be of uh, three types, leptocortic, uh, mesocortic and platycortic. Uh, and uh, this, but uh, mm, this uh, uh, skewness is also uh, distribution may be negatively skewed, positively skewed, or without any skew, as in the case of uh, normal uh, distribution. So these are the three properties of uh, distribution of data or set of data. For a set of data, there may be central tendency. There may be dispersion of data from its central tendency or uh, in the context of the normal distribution curve or when we compare with the normal distribution curve, the data may be with some uh, asymmetric or, uh, or maybe with the proper symmetrical uh, level or there may be a negative concentration. Uh, let's go, sorry, data may be of, uh, of uh, concentrated left side of the normal distribution curve or right side or maybe of with uh, peakedness or uh, flattedness. So for any uh, research purpose, the data should be like the normally distributed. Then only uh, <coughs> the conclusion uh, or inference will be adequately or, or yes uh, it can be adequately generalized to the population and the, the data will be negatively skewed and positively skewed uh, the result or the conclusion may not be applicable to the population because of this uh, improper arrangement of this data in the particular sense but there may, uh, similarly, there may be problem with the uh, uh, data uh, in the case of the uh, platycortic and uh, lepto. So whenever the data is uh, normally distributed like this, as seen in this figure, in uh, figure in the middle figure, then we can uh, reliably generalize the information. To the, the uh, purpose. So, a researcher must be very careful about the uh, property, especially the skewness and the kurtosis of the <coughs> distribution of the data, uh, or distribution of the data will be very <coughs> important. Okay, so these are the basics of the. Uh, 
basics of this uh, summarization of the data. Uh, then before that, we discuss this uh, organization of the data. This uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, organizing description and summarization is generally comes under the uh, heading of the or under the uh, categories of the descriptive statistics. We are describing the, the sample characteristics in this way. This sample is having a particular central tendency with uh, this kind of dispersion with a particular skew. There may be value for skew. In all these cases, uh, there may be value uh, with uh, skew, and skew may be positivity or negativity, or there may be some. Uh, kind of, or there may be some values that represent the kurtosis of the distribution. Normally, if it is zero, then only we can say that it is uh, normal distribution. If there is a number that uh, that number indicate positive or negative sign. In the case of the skewness, may be negative or positive. Okay, so that is the. Uh, descriptive statistics <clears throat> and for uh, descriptive statistics is for the simple uh, analysis of the uh, descriptive statistics is commonly used for the simple analysis of the data. For this prediction purpose, for the purpose of the inferences, we uh, you go for the next uh, aspect of these uh, statistics that is inferential statistics. I think before going to this uh, inferential statistics, and for the psychology, inferential statistics is very important uh, because all the research uh, <coughs> problem are addressed with using the inferential statistics. Okay, so I think before going to uh, the inferential statistics, uh, uh, I will give you a problem as it's shown in this uh, slide. Find the mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation for the following. Yes, after this uh, uh, basic of inferential statistics, the other parts of this class will be will be on discussing the problem and its various steps and its answer. Okay, and then we can start from here by using this uh, simple problem. So, you please uh, find. The mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation of the data. Now itself, this is very simple. And after that, we can continue the class. Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay, oh. sir. No, no one is. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this problem, after that, we can continue. Very simple problem.
Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Kelkanilla or Patamitai. Ah. Okay, ah, okay, okay. Hello, Neka. Oh, Adishi, Adin Munya Totting and the Kelkan and Dari in the Lapanya, which are issued. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> Okay, Sir, uh, now you have to ask the SD or the AD card. No, it's not. It's psychology, we are using only SD. 
you find only the mean median mode range and standard okay sir Yes. Okay. So, yes. There is your answer. Some more. Some answers are here in uh, chat box. Okay. So, uh, what is the mean here? Mean of this data series, mean of these values? Twenty. Twenty. Okay. Median. Twenty. Median. Twenty. Twenty. Median is also twenty. And more, what about more? Twenty. 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 So mean, median, mode are the same value. That's uh, that is twenty. And range is eight. The highest and the uh, yes. Mm. The difference between highest and lowest value that is here the lowest value is uh, 16, 16 and the highest is 24. So is it? Eight. Okay. Then standard point three six. For finding is it two point four? Standard division two point four. I don't know. Find the answer if uh, there are uh, more than five similar answers, then we will consider it as the right answer. Okay. So, what is the, the steps for uh, finding the standard deviation? First, to find the mean of the value, and after that, take the difference between mean and there are some disturbance. Sorry, please. Uh, that make I don't know. Yes. Uh, Doctor, be uh, you. Find the difference between each data from the mean, and uh, in order to uh, in order to avoid the negative sign, take its uh, uh, square. Okay, and add all this value, then using the formula root of sum x square divided by n. Here x means difference between difference between each score from the mean and its square sum all this value divided by Number take its square root. That is the standard deviation. Yes, what is the answer? Two point four. Two point three six. Two point three six. Three left. So, I don't know if I have a problem with the car. You can put similar answer in the answer. 
Sir, it's root of 5.6, that is 2.36. Ano, where mid mid tulad ako na ayon mo para yun nila. Sa ano klase na ni? Sa 2.4. Sa 2.4. Two point four. Ano? 2.4. I go to just 2.4. Yeah, it is 2.36. Okay. Yes. 2.36. Yes. Ah. One important thing that you should not for doing the statistical calculation. Don't put the approximate number. Okay. You take the first two values after decimal point. Not to, uh, not to uh, approximate to the next whole number. Okay. Uh, that will uh, create a problem for finding out uh, the problem with most if you approximate each value in each step. The final answer will be very different from the uh, real answer. Okay, so take the first two value after the decimal. Okay, in all this uh, statistical calculation, it is very important. Okay, uh, so the answer is. What is the answer here? Two point three six. Two point three six. Okay. Where are going to two point three six? Did you know that? Prepare in this. Sir, hello, hello. Two point four. Yes. Two point three. Two point four. Two point three six. Yes. Two point three six. Okay. Kritya Maya's answer. Get that. That carry. You step on the floor. It is simple. I step. What else? First of all, find the mean. You have already uh, found the mean. That is twenty. Then take the deviation from uh, take the deviation of each data from the twenty. That is uh, uh, yes. So you will get uh, my uh, some values with the minus or plus. So take its square root and add all these um, square. Sorry, not square root. Square. That is uh, some x square divided by number of observation, and take its square root. That is the value of the standard deviation. Okay, one minute, one minute. I will exact answer. We are twenty-two. That is minus two. That is four. One. What again? One nine nine zero zero. Sixteen zero again sixteen one. So what is sum x square? Sum of x square is equal to fifty six. Fifty. Six. 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 One. One minute. Yes. Fifty-six. So sum x square is equal to fifty-six. How many observation here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 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 Yeah. Ten observation. So fifty-six divided by ten. That oh, is okay, five point six. Okay. Minus one. Fifty is square root of five point six. That is the answer. Ah. Okay. Uh, square okay. root of five. It's two point three. That is two point three six. That is two point three. Two point three six. Yes, two point three six. The answer. Okay. So for this uh, uh, data, the set of data, the data is arranged with. With a variable index of 2.36, that means this data is hello.
that means this uh, data is <coughs> arranged data is set with this under tendency of 20 and with a variable index of with a dispersion of the 2.6 so each data is dispersed or varied with a with a common index of with an average index of 2.6 so we can uh, we can under, uh, we can uh, uh, by looking at this data we can understand for example 20 uh, difference between 20 and 22 20 and 19 17 23 so the average of this deviation average of this distance if we if we put this uh, data with a distance of 2 3 1 we can understand that this data are arranged uh, from the central tendency or from the central point of 20 with an index of or with an average of two points so the average of this portion is uh, uh, the <coughs> center uh, sorry standard deviation deviation of each data from the mean with a standard index the standard value that value is 2.6 in this program okay so uh, this is the descriptive statistics for this problem, uh, not the entire descriptive statistics. If you find the uh, skewness and kurtosis, uh, 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 skewness and kurtosis, generally we can say that we uh, describe this data with its all property, with its central tendency, central, uh, sorry, central tendency dispersion and skewness and kurtosis. For us, given a kurtosis is, is not for this uh, problem purpose, so we are not uh, going for that uh, discussion. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, um, next is uh, this uh, inferential statistics. I think uh, uh, we will just uh, uh, introduce this. Uh, uh, in French status and uh, after that we can uh, finish the class today okay <clears throat> so the other part of the statistical technique or statistical method or statistics that is inferential statistics that is uh, inferential statistics and uh, as we discussed uh, earlier It is the mathematics and logic of how generalization is possible from a sample to the entire population. How uh, an inference can be generalized to the population using uh, analyzing the properties of the sample. That is the uh, core of this uh, statistic, uh, sorry, inferential statistics. Okay, and this uh, type of statistics is widely applied in statistical, uh, sorry, psychological research, and it deals with mainly deals with the conclusion about the large group of people or population on the basis of observation of few participants. Hello, visible or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nobody is responding. Hello. Ah, okay. Sorry. Yes. And uh, two types of inferential procedure. First one is estimation, and second is hypothesis testing. Estimation and uh, hypothesis testing are uh, two kinds of uh, inferential statistics. Estimation, that means <clears throat> the investigator or researcher is estimating the characteristics of the population on the basis of what he or she discovered about the sample. And it can be influenced by the chance fluctuation and variation in sampling technique and other sampling errors. Here, estimation may be uh, unbiased or it may be uh, sometimes it may be a uh, problem with uh, consistent accuracy and the two 
types of estimation procedure there are point estimation and interval estimation. Yes, point estimation means estimation of population mean sample statistics. We are finding the uh, uh, sorry, we are finding the mean of the sample and uh, we are inferring that this is the mean of the population exactly we are uh, exactly we are finding the mean of the uh, population by understanding or by checking the mean of the sample that is point estimation interval estimation estimation of population mean will not be equal to the exact value of the parameter so Construct an uh, interval of this course that is expected to include the value of population mean. Such interval is called confidence interval expected to contain the population. There is an interval and in that interval there is a point, there is a uh, score or there is a uh, value and that value may be, oh, sorry, that, that value is the uh, that value is the mean of the population. So here the mean is estimated as an interval. Mean may be with the interval of, for example, 3.62, 4.8. That kind of interval is known. So, sorry, that kind of inference is known as interval estimation. And for the psychological purpose, uh, for, for the for, for, for further uh, so, uh, for psychological research purpose, hypothesis testing is very important. Testing the hypothesis is important. I think uh, you might have uh, so studied this uh, hypothesis testing in uh, in your uh, research paper, in your research methodology paper. Anyway, uh, generally, uh, this uh, inferential statistics is uh, closely related to the logic of the testing hypothesis or making a decision based on the statistical procedure and it is the central theme in most of the psychological research hypothesis as uh, you might have said is a tentative and test Double answer to the question formulated by the investigator in a test. Tentative answer is a tentative answer. When there is a problem as, uh, for a research, or whenever an investigator finds a problem to uh, study as part of his research purpose, research, there is a problem. Or the research start with a problem. Obviously, there is a problem and there is an answer. So this answer is put in the form of the hypothesis. So this answer may be a tentative in its nature and it also testable. So hypothesis means native and testable answer to the question. It may be a statement and the statement may or may not be true about the population parameter. When we uh, check uh, this uh, parameter in terms of the sample means, the parameter, sample parameter may or may not be true about the population parameter. Okay, so question is whether, is whether the hypothesis is reasonable in the light of the evidence collected from the sample. Researcher collects the evidence or data or information from the sample and he is testing this uh, evidence this information to know whether it is reasonable that is the question or that is central theme of hypothesis testing it is a procedure for deciding whether the result of the studies which examine a sample support a particular theory but for innovation or belief or knowledge which applies to a population. This will start uh, with the uh, problem and this problem may be related to the experience of the investigator, knowledge or theoretical 
uh, as per as per etc but uh, the question is whether uh, the sample or the uh, evidence from the sample data from the sample support uh, support the uh, support the uh, hypothesis form and generally the hypothesis is stated in terms of null hypothesis and uh, alternative hypothesis i think uh, okay i think we can finish here now uh -huh. and we can continue in the next class hypothesis statement null hypothesis uh, alternative hypothesis procedure i think anyway now this for work of so we can continue in the next class from this uh, testing hypothesis okay hello okay sir thank you no. uh, thank you sir uh, so uh, today we are okay uh, sir uh, sir one request okay. sir from the next day onwards uh, we prepare for doing problem okay so after this uh, this uh, basics of this uh, inferential statistics we are we will uh, we will uh, discuss the problem okay. uh, uh, different types of statistical problem uh, based on this uh, parametric and trip down parameter okay yes sir. yes so we can finish now today okay sir thank okay, you sir thank you for uh, thank you sir sir one small request uh, share the presentation okay. in the group sir uh, because uh, it will be beneficial because we are not able to read means most of the people have missed out the presentation between so if you can kindly share the presentation in the group okay our official group okay uh, okay definitely yes okay i will send the presentation to prema madam and the prema madam uh, yeah that's that's the, fine sir with your group okay thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much okay welcome back